Boys and girls, Marty Borg is telling you the true reason all these long drive guys hit it so far because, well, everybody believes it's speed, speed, speed. And yeah, that's a part of it, but without the right launch and the right spin, the right curve, and the perfect mix with the conditions, speed doesn't mean a thing. Because you can be the fastest in the world, but you can, well, spin the out of the golf ball every single time and it's not going anywhere. So it's really about finding the right launch spin and the resulting apex, so the highest ball of the ball flight, for your conditions. Best example is right now I'm preparing for Utah. Utah is a little bit higher altitude, so we need a higher launch and more spin to keep the ball up in the air for longer, so it's eventually going further. And also for you guys out there on all these golf courses, it might be different conditions, right? It might be super wet, you need a longer carry. It might be super dry, you need more rollout, and you need a steeper descent angle. So all these numbers are super important, but the only thing you can really change when you're hitting this golf ball is what you do when it launches. So you can change the launch angle, you can change the spin rate, and you can change the spin axis. That's all you can do. Right now, what I do, best example for Utah, I changed my loft setting right here to neutral minus one. Usually my adapter also has a minus two, and most of the time I go neutral minus two, which sets me to about two to two and a half degrees, depends on the actual stock loft of the club. But this is what I do to manipulate spin. So the head and the shaft, this right now is an Acra FX140 M0, which is a fairly soft, but a little bit heavier shaft compared to the TPT. So this setup to me is purely, and this is how I do it, right? This doesn't mean that everybody's doing it this way. This is my way of doing this. The setup of the club is my baseline for the spin. I don't like to really change my spin a lot with my wrists. So I really try to get my wrists out of the equation. So I wanna get the right setup for the spin that I'm looking for, and that's why I loft up a little bit by going from minus two to minus one for Utah to get the spin up a little bit. Talking about launch, the first bit that I do to launch it a little bit higher is to tee it up higher. Because just naturally, I create a higher angle of attack when my tee is a little bit higher, so I'll launch it higher. And then based on the setting of my loft, the spin rate is the resulting factor because keep in mind, dynamic loft, so the loft at impact minus angle of attack is the spin loft. And that including the impact location where I hit it in the face pretty much defines my spin rate. Long story short, for Utah, higher tee for higher launches, a little bit higher loft for more spin. And then what I change as well in the setup because I don't really like to change my swing a lot. I just kind of let it happen because the higher T is, is going to change the, the swing a little bit. The only thing that I change is a little bit of ball position. So ball position a little bit more towards the middle, a little bit more towards the outside because it does two things. One, the further I move it up, the more I hit it left because the swing arc is going to shut the face a little more going that way. So that's one thing that's happening, but also the further I move it up, the higher the angle of attack is going to be based on the swing arc and the higher the ball is going to go. So that's one of the things that I change as well. Okay, so let's hit the first one. A little bit higher T, a little bit higher loft, ball position a little bit forward. So I just try to swing it up and create that high launch with medium spin. So what I'm looking for basically for Utah is 15 plus. 2,500 plus. So we got a 10 angle of attack. That's interesting. We got a 16 launch and we got a 2,100 spin. So we can get that up a little bit, but also just an example. I hit that a little bit high in the face, a little bit toey. So what that's doing is the higher I hit it in the face, the higher the launch is going to be just based on the bulge and roll but also the lower the spin is gonna be because of the vertical gear effect. So that's why a perfect strike in the middle, and that's what I'm looking for, would probably would have resulted in 14 and a half launch and about maybe 26, 2700. And that's still pretty okay for Utah. Let's just say I would try to launch it a little bit lower. Let's say 10, because the grid that I'm hitting at is running more or we're hitting into wind. And also, as a combination, I would want to keep the spin low. 
so below 2000. So definitely then in such a setting, I definitely need to change this. So what I do then is I go to neutral minus two, neutral and minus two, and there we go. And as I said before, remember, that's very much what I do to change spin. The shaft, yeah, there's some differences, and then you gotta dial it in with the loft as well. But from all the shafts that I hit, the spin rate definitely do not differ as much as the loft setting changes it. So it's, it's really interesting. Sometimes you're a little bit more inconsistent the, the softer you go in terms of shaft, but it's very much about how you load it and how you time the unloading of the shaft. It varies a little bit every now and then, but the, the biggest factor for me, for sure, is the loft setting. So back to launching at 10, which is lower, and spinning it below 2000. So what I wanna do now is I do not wanna have the ball position as much forward. I wanna have it a little bit back. It's still forward. A little bit more back. So my angle of attack is going a little bit lower there. The launch is going a little bit lower. So let's see what that does. I try to keep all the other swing thoughts exactly the same. So I do not wanna change it one bit. That's one, that's pretty hammered. Two, angle of attack 4.8, 10 launch, 1800 spin. So that's pretty much the number I was looking for. And for that, I definitely need a lower T. So the T for me is a big, big factor. So let's say we encounter a left to right wind, a strong left to right wind. And I'm a natural draw player. So with my natural ball flight, I would try to fight the wind. So that can hurt my distance. So now let's just say I wanna keep the launch conditions pretty much normal. Let's just call them normal, right? Normal sea level, uh, normal ground, everything normal, but crazy wind off the left. So now what we gotta do is we keep it at neutral minus two. The T height is going to pretty much medium because we wanna give the ball some height for sure but we don't want to hit it like crazy high up in the air because the wind is just going to catch it more. But we can keep it super low because let's say the grid doesn't give that much release, right? So it's a medium height T. And now pretty much the only thing that I do because I am a natural draw player, I do not try to ride the wind like crazy and hit a cut into this. Basically what I try to do is just hit a pull. I just aim a little bit more to the left and just try to hit a straight pull into the wind that is starting OB left and then let the wind take it back to the right. That's very much what I did in Mesquite in a lot of conditions and a lot of days. Mesquite is weird. You got this mountain in the background. It's, it's moving everything a little bit more to the right because of the way the wind is swirling. It's weird. But anyway, so now I would just try to set up like normal, a little bit more open. Ball position maybe a touch forward just to promote the left start a little bit and then just hit a, hit a crazy pull. And when I basically just to fight the draw a little bit, I would just try, this is my feel to create a straight shot or a straighter shot, is to as soon as I reach the top of my backswing and I try to initiate the downswing, move all that pressure forward, I would try to rotate my thorax as quickly as I can just to keep that face a little more neutral or maybe even the hair open. So let's try to do that. Aim left and think thorax rotation. That's what I want to do. That is absolutely perfect. But if I could hit, hit it like that every time, that'd be nice. Now my path was six degrees from the outside. My starting line was 5.7 degrees left. My spin axis was 2.8 right, and my spin rate was 1800, 12 launch. That's pretty much, I would say, the normal perfect launch, or the, that, that's pretty much optimized for normal conditions, and now I just try to let the wind take it. So that is the three factors, basically, that I try to do. Same applies then to the right side. So that was into wind or a lot of roll. That was Utah conditions. That was wind off the left. Same applies when it's wind off the right. I would even try to draw it a bit more, just try to hit my natural draw. And now one more very interesting condition is actually crazy downwind. Because what most people underestimate is how much spin you actually need when it's downwind. And the craziest bit is when it's in Denver, for example, when there's even more altitude to it. So you need like 
sometimes 3,500 spin is optimized. That's crazy. So sometimes you want to go plus one. So I go to the neutral and plus one setting, which puts me to five and a half degrees, or sometimes I even have one of the driver heads that is a stock 4.9, so that would put me to almost six degrees. So I just try to add as much spin as possible. And also what I would try to do is just to launch it up in the air like crazy. So I want to cr basically create, let's say 19 launch with like 3000 spin. That's what I would be looking for right here, right now. Let's try. So what I need for that, for sure, is a high T, is a crazy high T. So thank God we can use T-claw in competition that makes our lives a little bit easier. So we can dial in the T height a lot easier. So now, plus one, to me, this driver head right now looks like a pitching wedge, it's crazy. So I haven't seen that much face in a long time. So now what I would try to do as well is, apart from just putting that ball position a lot forward, I would try to tilt my shoulders a little more. So I'm already in the position to swing up and launch it a lot up when I'm addressing the golf ball. But as soon as I've done that, now that thought is done, it's over. So now all I can focus on is launch that ball up in the air from, from the top of the backswing. So let's see, that was 12 up on the angle of attack. That's a 19.2 launch. It was a little high in the face, so it only spun 2,000. So that's not enough. So we got to give it one more. Okay, set up, ball position forward, tilt the shoulders, put you in a position to launch it up there, and then launch it up there. Oh, that was towed. Let's see what we got. We got a 20 launch, 1,800 spin, because it was high toe right there. It was also a little left. So and that's, that's the next level eventually, hitting it straight, finding the grid. And everybody's struggling with that at some point. It's totally normal. So in long drive, what you got to learn is that nothing's perfect and that you got to know your quick fixes right away. Like whenever you make a mistake, you have to know what you got to do to correct that. You got to know the right remedy for that situation. So you gotta know like, okay, I hit it too far right, so I do this and that. I hit it too far left, so I do this and that. But most of the time for me, I'm too far from the inside and the face is shut. So what I try then, just as a feel, that was the case now, by the way, as well, because as soon as I tilt my shoulders that much and I try to launch it up that much, naturally the path is gonna come more from the inside because I try to launch it up that much, right? Because the angle of attack is gonna be 13. So usually what I try then is, it's a little contradictory, but I just try to create a little bit steeper takeaway feel. So I'm like, takeaway steep, takeaway steep. And as I swing down, I just try to keep that path a little more from the outside. Eventually it's gonna be on the inside, but my feel is it's on the outside. So let's try that. Okay, so ball position forward, that's moving the ball to the left, also up. Tilt in the shoulders, it's gonna move the ball more up. Also gonna increase angle of attack, so we're gonna move the ball left. So you gotta know how you can like kind of balance that with a takeaway. That's what I try now. So let's see. That was absolutely perfect. Here we go. That was high, that was spinning. It looks absolutely terrible in normal conditions. Like right here, that ball does not make sense and it's super short, but it's 21 launch, it's 3200 spin, it's 12 up. So that's the kind of shot that you're looking for when it's downwind. It's terrible to look at that when it's actually normal conditions and you're practicing that. Also, right now, as I said, I'm practicing for Utah, but I'm up here in Munich, which is only 1,500 feet of altitude. So that shot that I'm practicing right here, right now, does not make sense, but it might make sense in Utah. Let's hope for some downwind so I can maybe even put that shot in play. It wasn't because I know you've already subscribed, but I got one more thing for you if you like the video. Do it right now, and I got one more very interesting fact for you. Because these golf balls right here that I'm hitting are all competition balls. So I snuck them at the last event. They're used balls, and I just took them with me. And it's really important to practice spin stuff with a ball that you use on course or in competition as well. Because these balls are all down there. I'm gonna go there now and pick them back up to hit them again tomorrow, hopefully. But 
different balls spin at different amounts. So you gotta practice with whatever you play with. And at driving ranges, sometimes that's tough, but I can recommend go find a golf sim, use a quad, get the right spin rate, and dial it in indoors. And then you can kind of get a feel for how your actual ball compares to the range ball. Then you can practice the right spin rates with it because I figured these range balls out here, the Wilson Premium Soft or whatever it is, they spin around a thousand, thousand more at my speeds. So you can't really practice with it because it's just looks terrible and gives you a weird feel. Boys and girls, which one of these shot shapes or launch conditions do you use the most? Because at your home course, it might be so different. You live in Utah, you live in Denver, you live in Miami, completely different. Comment down below which one you try to hit the most.